we know with expireds, here in the metro area, 9,036 expireds in the last 12 months. 9,036 listing opportunities just here in the front range. So I know we have people from all over the country here. You can run these stats. Just go to your MLS and you can pull up how many expireds you've had. You'll be able to see that number. So if you were able to capture just 1% of that 9,000, that's 90 listings a year. 90 expired listings with an average list price of 650, that's $19,500. That's a million seven fifty in GCI revenue. If you only captured 1%, heck, let's just say you did half a percent. Let's say if you did a quarter of a percent, you can do the math on this. The goal for every single person here should be at minimum selling one listing a month until you've got that muscle built. Then it's two, then it's three, then it's four, then it's five. And it's a very easy process to build as long as you follow the formula right? And there is a formula in all of real estate that's very simple. So the opportunity is there. The second thing that we have to think about with expireds is why do listings expire? And once you understand this and you really hone into these pain points, it's going to make it so much easier for you to deliver a resolution to that seller to help them move forward. So we know first it's either price, right? When we talk about expireds, we know that the majority of the reasons they come off the market is they did not have a pricing strategy. So in order for you to be really good at listings, you have to become really good at pricing. That means you have to practice CMAs. You have to make sure that you can explain your CMA in the highest level with all of the data points to make sure every expired I've ever met with, I go in. The only reason that I ever sell them is I go, hey, look, your previous price was this. Can I show you why that didn't work? They go, oh, okay, that makes sense. We adjust the price, relist the property. It goes under contract, we get paid. But if you're not able to explain price and help the seller see it clearly and make it logical to them, and you just go in and you go, you know what, John, I saw you came off the market at 500. Um, I think we should maybe just list it at 475. What do you think? You're going to get smoked. They're going to be like, what are you talking about? So how good is your CMA? Now, we have tons of videos on our Brendan Bardic Real Estate Coaching website on YouTube that have videos that talked about exactly how to do the perfect CMA. We have a CMA mastery course that you can purchase that gives you all the insights and details on how to do this. You got to get good at pricing. It's a big piece of being an expert listing specialist. Then if it's not priced, maybe they were priced correctly, but the condition is disgusting, right? They have 16 boa constrictors. They have a grow house, right? In their basement. So many sellers, I walk in and they're like, oh, we grow tomatoes in the basement. I'm like, that doesn't smell like tomatoes, sir, but sure. Okay. So maybe there's some conditional things that we have going on here that are limiting the house from being sold, either interior, exterior. Sometimes we got people that have smoked in their house for 10 years. We've got all of these things that make people people that we have to address. The previous agent just didn't do anything to address them. So if you don't fix the problem and just keep trying to do the same thing over and over, you're not going to sell the property. Then of course we have our strategy. So there wasn't a strategy involved. The person listed with her cousin, Tony, and Tony was like, Hey, I'm going to take some pictures, put it on the MLS and hope some people show up, put a sign in the yard, fingers crossed. We'll see what happens. There was no coming soon strategy. There was no program. There was no special features that you were going to do to go, look, when we do this play and our strategy, then it produces this kind of result. Then of course, marketing, we've seen all of these bad listings where the photos were taken at an angle with a cell phone and there was three pictures of a house or whatever it is. They're not using any marketing. And then the biggest one that we find that is the hardest thing for agents to understand is so many times I talk to expireds and I go, well, how many times were you speaking with your agent about you know this process over the last 90 days, six months, whatever it is? And they go, yeah. I mean, I talked to him at the beginning and then he kind of just started ducking me after that. Because as agents, we're not comfortable enough Enough going to our seller and going, this is what needs to be done for you to sell. They go, I'm just going to try to hide until somebody shows the house and hopefully they'll like it. So the communication failed them during that process. All right. So then we understand the psychology. They want to sell. They want answers. They probably have trust issues, right? They just started dating someone and they broke up. Now they got trust issues. So you got to reaffirm them that trust where you've got to be the hero. You've got to be the person that they can rely on in this situation. They're obviously discouraged. They have limited understanding of the market. That's why they probably expired because they didn't understand the market. They think they can sell it for a lower cost. So a lot of times they're constantly focused on cost and not net. 
And like many sellers, they think their house is special and it just requires a unique buyer. Brendan, you don't understand. My house is just really, really unique. So we have to find a very special buyer and that's just going to take time. That's a complete falsity, right? That is not how it works. The more unique your house is, probably the more aggressively it needs to be priced because you're reducing the amount of buyer pool that's going to be interested in that home, all right? And we have to be able to be confidently explain that to them. So the next is where do we find these beautiful, delicious listing leads every day, right? Yum, 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 yum. Delicious listing leads every day. You've got options. You've got a free option where every day you can pull up in the MLS all the properties that expired the day before. Here in the front range, it averages anywhere from 25 to 35 homes a day on average. Once you go into the MLS, you have a choice. Either you can go and door knock that person because you don't have a phone number. You can use a service like 411.com, reverse address search, any of these things to try to take the address and find the phone number so you can call the seller. Or you can pay a company like the Red X or Mojo, and there's several others, Vulcan 7, Land Voice, all of these different services that charge you a monthly fee to pull all this data for you and try to provide you contact information so you can call this person. Biggest piece of all of this is people get caught up on going, you know what, I'm going to spend 150, 200 bucks a month on the Red X or Mojo. Man, that just seems really expensive. Are you on crack? $200 to make $200,000? It's a cost of doing business. You're a real estate professional. Data is the oil in our business. The more data that I have and the better data I have, the better out I can execute my role, the more conversations I can have, the more houses I'm going to sell. So that's critically important. The next piece is then on anything, first, I've got to find the leads. Then I need to have a very specific conversation with them that leads to an appointment, right? I've got to be able to talk to them and lead to an appointment. So when we talk about scripts, there are so many scripts. We will put in the chat box, our script book that you can have for free. It has our 50 most common objection handlers. It's got every script you could possibly ever need. You've got to be able to make sure that there's a rhythm to this conversation. So when you call up someone and you just go, Hey, yeah, I was calling Joe. I saw that your house came off the market yesterday. What are you going to do with that house? Do you know? That person's going to be like, what are you talking about? Right? There's got to be a script that creates a rhythm and you have to memorize it. You have to internalize it. You have to breathe it. And you have to have passion when you're delivering it. Because if you're calling me at 7.30 in the morning about my property that came off the market yesterday, you better excite me. I better be excited to talk to you. And I better have a script that goes, I asked this, this, this. And when I ask that, it leads to me setting the appointment. I set this many appointments a day. I go on X amount of appointments. I take X amount of listings and I make X amount of money. So that's huge. So to get better at scripts, the only way to get better is to write it out. Just keep writing out the script over and over so you can put it into your memory. You can read and record it. So on your cell phone, you have a voice memo button. Most of them, I don't know about Androids, but just at least on the iPhone. And you're going to call into that, or you're going to speak your scripts into your voice memo. And you're going to play it back over and over again in your car, in your headphones, when you're on the treadmill, whatever it is. And you're literally going to brainwash yourself. And you have to do this to be a top professional. Well, let me, people are like, I do very well and I didn't have to do that. This is if you want to be the best, right? People go, yeah, I'm not going to do that. That sounds so like extra. Then don't be extra. Don't make a lot of money. It's your choice. Okay. Then you have to have role play practice. So in our organization, we have live role play. We go through our scripts and dialogues where you can either do it on Zoom. You can do it on a phone call. You can have role script partners. You get paid to talk. Think how crazy that is. You get paid an absorbent amount of money to speak to people about buying and selling real estate. So therefore, you need to train on how to be a better communicator to make sure that you can do it at the highest level. And any time you're role playing, number four is you always want to end in a win. So if you have a role play partner, you always want to win in that success of you setting the appointment, you having them sign the agreement when you're sitting at the listing appointment, always end in success. So you're programming your brain for the outcome you want. That's very important. Okay. We find that of all of the agents in the country that are the very top, this is probably the biggest thing that they do that the others just will not do. And we don't do script practice because we go, oh, it's just so uncomfortable and I'm going to sound stupid. And what if somebody laughs at me and all of these limited beliefs, you got to get out of your head. Just have fun with role play, get better, get stronger at your techniques. You're going to have a lot more sales. All right. So now you're ready to make a phone call here and talk to an expired listing. To do that, you need to know your inventory. 
So for all of you out there, you need to create a daily hot sheet. Even if you have a, an expired provider, right now, there's probably a house that's expired within walking distance to where you currently live. Think how crazy that is. I guarantee there's one in the last 30 days. So if you had a hot sheet in the MLS that popped up with your area that you feel you're very confident in, and you knew every day that these properties were coming off the market in that area, wouldn't you just go call them, knock on the door, introduce yourself and say, hey, I was shocked that you came off the market. I have a lot of amazing things that I do that are very different to help you get your home sold. Do you have 15 minutes for me to talk to you about how we can get your home sold? It's that easy, right? Worst case their scenario, they're going to say no. You go on to the next one. That one's going to say yes. It's all a numbers game, all right? Then we got to be first. So if you're calling expireds, you want to be first, which means that you have to be good at this in the morning. And this is where there's so much opportunity. 90% of agents won't even start their day until nine o'clock. You start calling expireds at 7.30 a.m. or you start knocking on the door at 8 a.m. or you start doing any of these activities, you're going to beat your competition dramatically. Then you're going to do your research. So very quickly, you're going to pull up what happened with this property. Why do I think it came off the market? Was it the photos? Was it the price? Was it all of this? You got to eliminate distractions while you're going through this. And then, of course, recite your affirmations. So my next call is going to be my next appointment. My next call is going to be my next appointment. My next call is going to be my next appointment. My next call is going to be my next appointment. you got to program your mind with what you want. Obviously, to be a professional, you need to have a headset, right? Or AirPods now, obviously it's headsets, but you have to have the professional devices. We have people that have noise canceling microphones, all of this. You want to be able to walk around freely, make these calls and get into the excitement, right? If you're sitting in your chair and you're just going to call up people, you can't get that energy across. And then of course, you need to have a mirror. And the reason for the mirror is to monitor your energy level, right? You're looking at yourself. Am I smiling? Am I bringing that energy? When I go to do this, this person's going to be excited to talk to me. Now, if you go, look, Brendan, I'm just kind of an introvert and that's not my jam. Best part about this call is you get to be whoever you want to be on the phone. You get to play a part. It might not be who you are in real life, but it's just like how actors and actresses every day, they're playing a part for that role. You're playing the role of superhero expired listing specialist. That's the role that you're playing. And that's your mindset going into it, right? So I'll share with you for a moment here, just a screenshot so you can kind of see what that setup looks like. So this was my office setup for years. You're going to have your mirror. You're going to have affirmations. I have all my scripts pasted to the wall. So when I'm standing there making calls, if I get an objection handler, I need to look at that real quick. I've got my calendar. I know exactly what I'm doing. And that's what we're trying to talk about is playing this at a high level. If you're going to be making calls, it might be helpful to have scripts and objection handlers taped up. So as you're sitting there and the phone's dialing, you're rereading them, you're getting them kind of soaked into your brain. And then you have this whole setup where you're just rocking and rolling. All right. What is your workstation setup like? Now, if you go, Brendan, I'm still at a cubicle or Brendan, I just started yesterday and I got to work from the bullpen. I've had so many agents that will go get like that board that you use to like for school, right? And you have a three boards, you get a little mirror, you tape it to the mirror, you tape your scripts up and you bring it with you and you unfold it and you put it in front of you and go, it's time to lead Jen. Let's rock and roll. I'm ready to go. Instead of going, you know what? I'm going to try to call a couple expired today, see how that goes. Maybe I'll do that until about 8.30. And if I get hung up enough, I'm just going to stop doing that and start going on Facebook and seeing what's going on there, right? You've got to commit. Commitment is the key to this. How you show up is going to matter greatly. It's going to be dependent upon your results, all right? Now, a lot of things have changed. Are people answering the phone as much as they used to? No. So in the morning, when you're calling expires, the first thing you're going to do is send a text. If you're using a service and you're getting the phone number, hi, John, I noticed your property came off the market and I was shocked. We have a lot of buyers and I was curious if you're still interested in selling. So I'm texting them first and I usually start having my texts go out at 7, 6.30, 7 a.m., then when I call, they're going to see that number come up from the text message. They're going to be like, oh, this guy already has some buyers. Maybe I'll answer the phone this time. So the text is key in this. We're going to have a much higher rate of responding. Now they might be responding and go, uh, well, great. So can you bring them by? And be like, hey, well, before I bring them by, I just want to talk to you for a few minutes to make sure I understand all the details of the property. Um, I'm available today at nine for a quick phone call. Does that work for you? Whatever it is, you're just going to start having these conversations, all right? 
So we got to know what to say to them. The script, right? And in the chat box, as I said, we'll give you a link to where you can download the script book. This script is not rocket science. The opening line is everything. I'm calling about your property. I noticed it came off the market. And I was curious, are you still interested in selling? All they're going to do is say yes, no, repeat back whatever they say to them. Tell me again, why are you selling the property? I'm not going to take you through the script because we have a lot to cover today, but you're going to memorize a simple script and write this down. Rhythm is everything. In a script, if I just don't keep this rhythm and I start asking questions and there's nothing continuing on, then I can't make the progression that's necessary to go th through the bottom. It takes energy. It takes all of this to make sure that you're kind of going through this. So at the end, it ends up setting the appointment, which is what we want, right? We've got to end in setting that appointment. So there's a rhythm, but you got to memorize it, right? And if you go, Brendan, you know what? This doesn't sound like me. I don't like it. I don't whatever. All I can tell you is use this first, then customize it over time for what works for you. But I can tell you, I've listed a ton of properties using this exact script. So I know it works. I wouldn't be telling you to use it if it didn't. Next, we've got the follow-up strategy. So I wish it was just as easy as waking up, calling them and striking gold. That's not the play. You have to make sure that you have an expired system, a follow-up system. So automated workflows. So whatever CRM you're using, we use follow-up boss, right? We've got follow-up boss, why Lobo, whether you're using whatever it is your company provides. We've got to build a touch program inside of that system that goes, all right, I called the expired, told me he wasn't going to be relisted for six months. I'm going to do this, 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 and this over the next six months until he's ready to list with me. Because where the real opportunity is, is that we know most agents are going to maybe reach out once, maybe twice. There is about 1% of all agents that'll do the third, fourth, fifth, sixth follow-up because they don't have it organized. And if you're not organized and you think you're just going to go hit home runs and you're going to call five expires today and three of them are going to tell you to come over, that's not how it works. It's all about the follow-up. In addition, you could have pop buys. I know a lot of top agents that get listings because they saw a property came off the market. They'll go and introduce themselves. They'll pop by a week later, a month later, and just be like, hey, I was just topping by. In fact, I brought you over XYZ or CMA or something of value to help them along the way. And they go, oh my gosh, this person is really excited about getting this house sold for me. So I might as well list it with them when the time is right. And then at the bottom, 2% of sales are made on the first contact. Think about that. Three on the second, five on the third, 10% of sales are made on the fourth contact, and 80% of all sales are made on the fifth to 12th contact. Do you have a five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 touch program. If not, you got to make it. And it's not that hard. You're going to have to give up a Saturday night or a Sunday afternoon, go into the CRM and go, okay, when I process this person, I'm going to do this in a week. I'm going to do that the next week. I'm going to send a handwritten note card. I'm going to send them a market report. I'm going to send them this. You just start to automate it. All right. And here's my pro tip and write this down. Start small and then build up. Maybe you start with a three-touch program. Just nail the next three weeks after you talk to an expired. Or if you don't get them on the phone, maybe you don't get them on the phone, the first mailer goes out and it talks about your strategy, your services, or whatever. The second week, you send a postcard. The third week, you do a handwritten note card. The fourth week, you do a pop by and stop and knock on their door. It's gotta be like a factory. Gotta be very efficient all the way through. What do we mail? So again, market reports, what your options are for helping them get their home sold, a handwritten note saying you were shocked that they came off the market, anything that could provide them value or anything that's going to make them go, wow, this person is reaching out to me and actually cares that my property came off the market. That's all we're trying to do. All right. And then lastly here, so we talked about this earlier, set up automatic hot sheet for listings. This just means in, in your MLS, you're going to save the expireds that pop up every day. So you're seeing all of them come up. Okay. And then, of course, you can do expireds, reactivated listings. You're going to want to do that every morning. And then it just automates. You don't have to do anything once you do the save search in the MLS. And then know the goal. The goal is to get to the house. You got to focus on the seller and block their objections and not try to handle them. So when we block objections, that means that in our program, in our listing presentation, in our listing strategy, we know that we're going to block any objection that they could ever have because we've already addressed it in our presentation. What I mean by that is every seller is usually going to have the same amount of objections. Okay. First one, price. So to conquer price, I have to be really good at my CMA and that conquers that objection. How much do you cost? 
I have to be really good at delivering a net sheet and let them know that we're going to go over a net sheet so that I can block that objection of cost so that we're focused on net and then we get past that objection. Maybe it's staging. Maybe you have a way that you block that because you provide a staging consultant for 250 bucks for every listing that you do. Whatever it is, you're blocking all of these objections on the front side. So when I meet with that seller, I go, boom, 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 boom. And they go, yes, he answered everything. So the only thing left to do is, yep, sign. It's all I got left. He already addressed anything that I could probably vocalize. So you're just trying to cut off those issues ahead of time. So you don't have to try to defend them later. When a seller goes, so yeah, so what do you charge for commission? As soon as you get that out, it's so hard to get past it. But before I ever go and I go, look, I'm excited to meet with you. I'm going to take you through a detailed estimated net sheet that'll talk about exactly what you're going to walk away with when it's all said and done. Bop, 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 bop. Then they go, oh, okay, well, he's going to show me the net sheet. So I'm not going to ask about commission. Perfect. Okay. So that's how we do that. Should we do priority mail? Yeah, you can do priority mail. Absolutely. Again, looking at this, the secret of this and the hardest part about this is the more it looks personalized, the higher response you're going to have, the more that it looks automated, the less conversion you're going to have. So you're trying to find that balance. All right. And then the last part, door knock. And this is the biggest opportunity of all. And I hope you really understand this. Even with the best services on earth, we maybe can get 25 to 30% of any contact information, meaning a phone number to call. Then even if we call, they might not answer the phone. Then even if we call and they answer the phone, right? They haven't been able to put a name to a face. People are so much nicer to people in person, unless you're in sketchy neighborhoods, right? They're so much nicer to you in person because you've walked up and you've said, hey, my name's Vicky. I work with XYZ Company. I was shocked that your property came off the market yesterday. Are you still interested in selling the home? That's all you got to do. So when you look at this, when you're door knocking, I try to think about one a day minimum. If you're door knocking 20 doors a month, five days a week, four weeks out of the month, you're door knocking 20, you're going to convert two or three. I guarantee it. It's just the consistency. And you're going, well, how am I going to do that? Well, that's why you have the hot sheet. If it's me, I'm going to go with the ones that are the most close to me to go and door knock those. If I drive to an office every day, I'm going to pull my hot sheet and see which ones are on my way to the office or on my way home from the office. And I'm just going to stop by. Evenings are best because of course people are home. Saturdays and Sundays are the even better. Think about this. You know what I'm going to do this weekend, Brendan? I'm going to do a three hour open house and hope and pray that buyers are going to walk in and maybe one of the buyers will want me to work with them. And then if they do, then I'm going to have to get them pre-approved, show them a whole bunch of houses, work six times harder. Or on a Sunday, I could go door knock expired listings, talk to people that are actually ready to sell right now that need my services that are going to pay me more than I get paid as a buyer's agent. Because at the buyer's agent pay, I'm just susceptible to whatever the agent's willing to pay or whatever the seller's willing to pay. Would that be a better use of time? Yes. The answer is yes. It is definitely a better use of time. Then you're going to prepare. So again, I'm going to dress to impress. And the only thing I bring with me is a yellow sticky notepad, you know, the little sticky notes. And with those yellow sticky notes, if somebody doesn't answer, I write my phone number and name and I say, hey, I have a couple questions. Can you please give me a call and my phone number? Stick it on their front door, stick it on their garage, wherever you want to stick it. They come home, they have no idea what the heck I'm putting the sticky note on their thing for. They don't know if it's their dog ran away, whatever happened. They're going to call you back. You get them on the phone, you go, oh my gosh, thanks for calling back. Have the conversation. That's all we got to do. 